Hello, how are you? Have you been all right? On all those fattening pasta, pasta, pasta nights When you don't feel okay Your belly really hurts Because you're eating crappy pasta Yeah, yeah, yeah Oh, this is gonna be healthy pasta What we're gonna start with is If pasta can ever be healthy What we're gonna start with is Chicken breasts and to the chicken breasts, add some extra virgin olive oil and about half of a lemon's worth of lemon juice. Mix it all around and then incorporate your poultry slash herb seasoning that I will include in the description along with everything else. And I think that's going to be the last time I'm going to say that because it just should be automatic by now. So yeah, it's down below. Um, salt and pepper, of course. And then once all of the spices are in, just go ahead and mix your chicken very well. Make sure that the herbs cover every single linear inch of the poultry. And now would be a good time to start heating up your grill pan or your grill or whatever you're gonna to use to cook this. And while that's occurring, you can fill up a pot with water and put it on the stovetop, bring it to a boil because we can cook our pasta while everything else is being prepared. So I love this grill pan. It works so well. You get such a beautiful uh, sear and grill marks on the chicken. It's kind of crazy because um, yeah, it's a grill pan. It's not a grill. Um, I don't know. It's just incredible. You just have to get it screaming hot, put some olive oil down on it, and then just press the chicken down, and you can achieve some pretty awesome results. So if you don't have one of these, heavy-duty cast iron grill pan will do wonders for you. And I think it has something to do with the gauge of the steel or the heaviness of the metal and its conductivity because, I mean, we only have a Weber grill here. It's not the best grill in the world, but um, it's very hard to get grill marks like this on the actual grill itself. Ironic, huh? I added some water to the pan just to cook the outside. You can see a little bit of the pink flesh is still remaining. Um, we are going to put this in the oven though or with a probe inserted to make sure that we get the perfect cook time that we want and the chicken will be nice and juicy when we finally add it into our pasta at the end which we're going to be using farfalla or bow tie pasta but it's called farfalla right okay um salt your water that is now at a rolling boil and go ahead and drop your pasta in you're going to want to cook this just to al dente or under because it is going to be cooked a little bit longer near the end when we incorporate all the other ingredients. Who's up for a shot of white cooking wine? I am. So if you're of legal age, go ahead and join in the party. So our pasta's cooking, our chicken is done. It is at about 155 or so. Uh, usually you cook chicken to 165, that is what's recommended, but I did a little under because again, we are going to bring everything together in the pan at the final mix, the big mix, and the cooking, the cooking will chicken, the chicken will cook. For me, I tossed it up. I said, uh, am I going to do a little pulled chicken with this or cube chicken? And I went with cube chicken. I just thought the pulled chicken would be, I don't know, not what I'm going for two you know strings of chicken throughout it i think that it looks nicer and it's important to highlight that nice perfectly cooked chicken breast because chicken breast doesn't have a lot of flavor except the type you impart to it so it to me you know you want to try to highlight the moistness and juiciness of that chicken breast grab a large onion and we're going to take three quarters of this onion and dice it up yeah then you could also chop it pretty fine once it is diced because we want it to cook pretty fast in the pan so that we don't evaporate and reduce too much liquid out of the onion at the end so as you can see here it's not completely pulverized but it's going to cook pretty quickly in the pan grab a red bell pepper do your Gordon Ramsay style uh, trimming of it around the side so you don't waste any 
Then you're just going to cut this up. You're going to dice this up as well. Easy. Very easy, this recipe is. It is something we would make at a restaurant I worked at in college, which was a dinner offering when the restaurant was open for dinner. And yeah, I just preferred it because it's not heavy. It doesn't involve a lot of fat and greasy elements. Like if you eat bolognese, just you're just like, uh, oh, okay, so I'm going to feel fucking terrible in about 30 minutes. Not with this pasta. And would you guys believe it? I'm actually going to chop up the garlic by hand. This is incredible. I'm not going to use the slap chop. If it was 20 cloves of garlic, yeah, I'm going to be using the food processor for sure. Next is going to be feta cheese. And I just grabbed a half of a five ounce block. We are going to, again, almost the same type of preparation for each one of these ingredients. It's just a different gauge of dicing. Uh, for this, I cut it into planks and then some little matchsticks, feta matchsticks. I guess you could have feta matchsticks. Why not? Um, and this is, we're going to throw this in at the very end because I don't like to cook feta cheese a lot. I feel like the heat really alters the consistency and the mouthfeel of the cheese. So we always like to add feta at the end in this house. I like this block feta too, much better than the already crumbled feta. I feel like it's significantly moister and, you know, but obviously you can decide. I, I got, recently got some in a, in a little container and it was uh, really dry. Okay, we're ready to combine everything. So go coat a very large skillet with extra virgin olive oil and then put in a couple tablespoons of butter and melt it all down. This is going to be one of the best parts, right? Butter, olive oil, onion, garlic. This is the this is the critical key to smell and success in your home to combine these elements. People think you're a master cook. Once the oil and butter is thoroughly heated, go ahead and dump your bell peppers and your onions in and just begin to saute those down until they achieve a nice little amberish color like that, very much like the uh, amber color in the marinara sauce. Throw in some cherry tomatoes, which I completely forgot until I started cooking everything to prepare, but I was able to do it really fast, so now it's in there. Um, get the garlic in there and continue to cook for another minute or two. Uh, the garlic probably won't burn in this just because there's so much liquid, so you don't have to worry about that this time, but generally it is a concern. To that mixture, you're gonna add your white wine and then bring all of that up to a simmer. Once that is simmering, you can go ahead and throw your Kalamata olives in. And I just have Kalamata olives that are already halved into pieces in a jar. We use so much of them in salads that we make generally every night, like a garden salad that I just found the best thing to buy is these ones that are already uh, prepared because you don't, you know, the only other place you get Kalamata olives is a salad bar. So just get them in the, get them prepared already. Saves a little bit of time. To that, we are going to throw in the grilled chicken. Look how good that looks. Those nice, big, moist, juicy cubes of grilled chicken. It's beautiful, right? Mix that all around. Make sure that the liquid is coating everything. And one of your last ingredients you're going to want to put in is your spinach because obviously uh, if you've ever cooked spinach before, it, you would know that it wilts very fast and cooks very quickly. So we don't need that to be in for the entirety of cook time. This spinach is going to take probably two or three minutes to wilt down. And again, I've chosen a vessel that is maybe too small, but it's literally the biggest thing I have. So I got to I got to just live with it at some point. Uh, like I said, we use farfalla here. We cooked it just under al dente because it's going to finish cooking in the skillet. And, you know, you could use penne for this uh, or rigatoni or whatever. I uh, wouldn't, wouldn't use like spaghetti or anything. But, you know, because you want to use something that's more consistent with a pasta salad. And I think that the farfalla does work perfectly. We use del checo, which I've said before. And it's available in most supermarkets across the country. But, you know, feel free to use whatever your preferred brand is. Finally, at the end, then you're going to put the feta in. 
you're going to do a quick mix one or two minute mix just to make sure there is a uniformity of distribution within the pasta and you are good to go this was the first thing i ate this entire day when i made this so i ate a lot of it but i can assure you it wasn't just because i was starving it was actually very very good and i hope you enjoy it it's a nice light meal to have perfect for a summer day summer dinner take care guys bye bye